Movies on the Radio, and I am again not Brandon Johnson, I'm James Fight. I'm here with Mike Davis. Uh, we're doing another pre-recorded show, this is uh, Movies on the Radio, Check Brain, Check Your Brain Edition. Check Your Brain Edition. Uh, we're doing a twofer, we're videotaping <laughs> and recording this to uh, give the radio show something to play and something to put on my website. So you guys can listen to this. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday when this airs. We're filming it on Sunday because we're lazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> Sunday. And uh, then you can go to our website and see how goofy we look recording this, leaning over into microphones. So, oh, hi. hi, guys. It's a microphone. Uh, we're on a KBYG uh, 106.3. You almost forgot. Uh, <laughs> we are going to... Uh, I, just to just in case, I mean, we'll do some movie news in a little bit, but we're we're gonna stick to a topic, which is gonna be our best and worst of 2013 for movies. So, I'm still getting used to saying it's 2014. Yeah, I, I'm just glad I don't write checks. <laughs> Me too. So, but on my paperwork though. Um. All right. So we got a top ten. Uh, each well, I got a top ten. Mikey's like, uh, I got something. I'll, I'll just chime in on yours. <laughs> if uh, I think of something else, I'll add to it. Yeah, we. Uh, I saw a lot more movies than I thought I did this year. I was surprised <laughs> uh, going through the list. And there's a lot that I haven't seen that I want to see. Uh, if we get through our list too fast, we might talk about some that we want to see. Uh, we might talk about those that we think is going to be really bad. Uh, <laughs> there's a few movies out there that I'm like, I just don't want to see that. He wants to. It's like a train wreck. He just won't admit to it. Yeah. Uh, one, one that I keep hearing about is 47 Ronin. Yeah. Keanu Reeves is back in movies. Uh, I hear that it's like one of the worst movies of all time. But in such a bad way that it's good. You want to watch it with a group of <laughs> friends and, and make fun of it, which I don't think we could do that at the theater, so we got to wait for it to come out on video. Uh, Why not so, in the theater? I guess you could. You might get kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> be a scatterbrain. <laughs> um, be. I'm going to start, I guess, on my list. I got them all on my handy-dandy iPhone here. Uh, Mine's charging. Let's start with uh, number 10 on my list of best and worst. Uh, the best is kind of in order. Um, worst is pretty much in order, what I didn't like. And some of these that are on my worst list, they are movies, not all of them deserve to be on a worst list. They're just movies that I didn't enjoy. I, I just liked them a far less than others. <laughs> so, uh, I got expectations and your hopes were dashed. <laughs> yeah, I got a number 10. This one I uh, is eh, Hangover 3. This on your best? It's worst. Worst. Oh. You you yeah. saw that one with yeah. us, didn't you? Yeah, we yeah. did the midnight thing with that one. Yeah. It's Hangover was cool. I liked it. It was different. Hangover 2 was a remake of Part 1, but a yeah. little bit darker, but not as dark as I would have liked. <laughs> this one, it had some funny moments, but it just seemed really unnecessary. Cash in. Yeah. I don't understand how this became a trilogy, really. It's supposed to be a one-night deal. Um, the best sequel to Hangover is Hostel 3, actually. <laughs> not even the same movie. Have you seen that movie? No. A bunch of guys end up in Vegas. They get drugged up, and they end up in a hostel being tortured. It's like the best Hangover sequel. Hmm. Hostel 3. <laughs> Guess I'll have to go watch that and find out. Um, my top 10, my number 10 on my top list of good movies. Uh, Frank's going to give me some crap for this, and a lot of people <laughs> might. World War Z. You saw that one too. Yeah. You went with I liked it. Frankie just. Yeah. What, what was his issue with it? 
he didn't like it because there was no gore. Oh. And he was like, you, and they didn't act like zombies, he said. they. He, he said it was World War II rabies. <laughs> well, that's kind of how they explained it. It's uh, not so much a zombie thing as a virus that just shuts down all but the primal instincts of the brain. Well, they they weren't eating people, I guess. Yeah, no. That was the thing. They were infecting them and moving on. Yeah, they were like a humanoid virus. Yeah. But they were dead but alive, so that made them zombies. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you want to get technical, I mean, the first movie that ever used zombie was White Zombie back in the 1920s. And they were just people that were hypnotized. <laughs> It wasn't until uh, uh, Night of the Living Dead when we got... Brain-eating zombies? Well, brain-eating zombies didn't start until uh, Return of the Living Dead. Mm. Night of the Living Dead, they, uh, George Romero, he came up with the dead coming back to life and eating the flesh. Yeah. And it was in the 80s when Return of the Living Dead, which is like a parody of Night of the Living Dead, that's the first one where they would eat brains. Mm. I'm like you with Marvel on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, he's talking about the 20s, man. It's like That was like decades before our time. That's uh, like when dirt was new. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give me what one you liked and didn't like this year. Well, I, I did like the World War Z. Um, I didn't take, as, take it as a non-zombie movie. It was just a... Probably a more realistic version. Yeah, it was more about the yeah. people than the zombies. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, what would happen if all of a sudden just this crazy virus thing, people just started going nuts. And I mean, and even even with the, along with the movie, it was explaining it. The, uh, it wasn't so much the zombie deal because they weren't stopping and eating people. They were just biting them to infect them. But like any virus, if there's already something there that is hurting the hurting the host, then they're not going to attack it. Yeah, That's how most it's... viruses work. So, to me, it all made sense. I I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people they they look at it and they think uh, it's well. People that read the book, I read the book, and they're like, it's nothing like the book. Well, the book wasn't a novel. It just was interviews and accounts with people who survived the zombie apocalypse and they took some ideas from those interviews and put it into a movie kind of flashback type deal except they made it one seamless movie except there there is a there's this uh story about how they refilmed the last half of the movie uh, yeah Brad Pitt wasn't happy with the way it turned out so he said no we're redoing it which i almost kind of want to see that other version i bet when it comes out on blu-ray they'll have the uh original cut well i got the blu-ray now oh you do i, I need to Do they not have it i haven't watched it yet oh. <laughs> looked um this dude I movie mania hasn't watched his own blu-ray i'm still trying to beat grand theft auto uh but you're not doing a very good job of i right got now. it turned on right now behind us <laughs> <laughs> we we had to wait for the we're in my house recording and we had to wait for the dishwasher to stop <laughs> So we didn't need we ambient playing. noises getting in here with our ramblings. Um, but anyway, in World War Z, the original cut was uh, Brad Pitt and the Israeli soldier. Uh-huh. They like get captured by Russians and are forced into their army. And his wife and family are kind of kidnapped by the uh, helicopter pilot who saved them from the apartment complex. Really? If you notice... That helicopter pilot is played by Matthew Fox, the main character from Lost. They got a big actor to play such a small part. Well, he was supposed to have a huge role in the movie. Huh. And uh, the movie uh, goes on to Brad Pitt discovers that the zombies freeze in in the cold weather, and that's how they can defeat them. And uh, ends with him getting back to America to find his wife, and then that's it. Cliffhanger. Huh. Until the second one comes out. Yeah, this movie was nothing like that. Yeah, it, I mean, although I, I like the way this one ended up. Uh, I like that little not epic climax in the 
what is it, the Disease Control Center. Uh-huh. Uh, I thought it turned out really good, but I am curious about that other one. Well, maybe it's in there in like a director's cut or something on your Blu-ray. Oh, we'll maybe. find out later. More right follow. after this, yeah. Um, all right. What's one you did not like that you saw this year? One I did not like. Um, well, I didn't see as many as you this year. <laughs> <laughs> I had to work through some of them. Uh, I'll say one that sticks out right off the top of my head be uh that uh oh dang what was it? It was a sequel. Uh. Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs too. Yeah, that's on I, my list yeah, also. That's, that's, okay, yeah, that's just one that I remember seeing in theater. I was just like, you know, the first one was good. The second one, it was just, you know, it's like they're trying too hard. I hate when they read it, when they do sequels, and you can just tell throughout the whole movie they're just trying so hard to push it, and it just kind of like, you're just like, eh, I don't want to watch this. Yeah, it, it, people are going to say we don't like it because it's a kid's movie. And I like the first I, one. That's a bunch of crap. I like kids' movies. Nothing wrong with them. It's just this one. They were just trying too hard. Yeah. To push the story, and it just got. It's it's one of those, you know, just because you're making it for a kid, don't try to insult their intelligence. Yeah. You can make a good movie for a kid. You uh, can make a great sequel. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs Two was like remaking Jurassic Park, but with food. <laughs> Pretty much. And if you go watch it, you'll see exactly what I mean. Uh, the first one, it looked dumb when I first saw previews for it, but watching it, it was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. And went and saw this one, and yeah, I left <sighs> kind of sad. <laughs> it was not a good day at the movies. No. So I went and saw it with my brother and my nieces, and of course, you know, they're five and seven. They thought it was great, but I was just kind of like, the first one was better. Well, you know, there's movies when we were kids that we loved, <laughs> and watch we them watch them now. now, we're like, what was wrong with What me? were we thinking? <sighs> How much of Grandpa's cough syrup did I have that day? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> All right, another That's one up. on mine is, um, we'll go with... Uh, Worst again. Another kid's movie. Epic. Did you see that one? Nah. It, uh... uh they they remade Fern Gully. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. I mean, it... I thought it seemed like a familiar type story. You see, the, the previews, I mean, they, they got you kind of pumped up. They had a really cool song playing through it. It looked like it was going to be really cool. Sometimes the previews and, are better than the actual movie. Yeah. And it's still... <laughs> Um, you all right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're epic just, no, the, there just wasn't anything epic about it. There's nothing epic about epic. No. And that's about all I got to say about it. It's <laughs> not, it's short and eh. sweet. It just fell flat. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, number nine on my favorite list is The Hobbit 2. Oh yeah, desolation of smog. 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 Depends on who you are and how you Smuggy. want to pronounce it. Smog. Smog. It's like a sound up. And smog. Smog. It's smog. Smog. The yeah. desolation of smog. Uh, we already did a review of this. If y'all have checked out our website, uh, we we liked this movie. We liked it a lot. Uh, it was really good. Better than the last one. Didn't seem to have as much filler in it, and there was a lot of filler, but they did it right. Mm-hmm. It was just really good. It's well, it was just the beginning of the book. It was just so drawn, and the actual book, it was kind of just drawn out in the beginning. It doesn't really pick up until the second act. Yeah, but see, the Lord of the Ring trilogy, the Fellowship of the Ring is my favorite. Uh, mm-hmm. Most people like Return of the King the best, but I like the the first one which is long and drawn out in little places but they did it right and with the hobbit they just had so much padding they had to do because they took a 200 page book and spread it out over three 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 hour long movies 200 pages nine hours i mean we 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 can stretch out our conversations about the movies that long (laughs) but um live streaming for one week (laughs) it uh I mean, I liked the first Hobbit. I liked it a lot. This one, I just liked a whole lot more. Yeah, just 
a little faster paced, I guess. Yeah. Uh, everything that needed to be fixed was fixed in this one. So you got any others you liked, didn't like? Uh, no, right I'm pretty much on your list. <laughs> All right, you I, just seen a couple more that I haven't. So that's only different. here's one that we both saw uh, on my worst list: uh, the Wolverine. Oh man! Now, since we've uh, seen it and talked about it, I don't think it deserves to be on a worst list. But it is one of the least impressive movies I saw. It was just eh, way better than X Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, Probably better, yeah, it's better than X-Men 3. But to compare it to Last Stand, uh, or not Last Stand, uh, what is it? First Class mm-hmm. and the first two X-Men? No. Nah. It, it might be on par with the first X-Men, actually. Yeah, it's just, I my biggest problem was that endings. Yeah. The ending part. They, uh. You just don't do that to Wolverine. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's 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 one of those movies where it's it's there could have been so much more. I mean, Wolverine fighting ninjas, mm-hmm. and you you think that you're going to get that payout? And you kind of almost do. It's more just you get a you get a moment where he's going to go up against ninjas, lots of ninjas, and then they, they take him, him out. Yeah, but there's the one scene where he does fight the one guy with a sword. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty cool. It's got some great moments in it, but it just wasn't what it should have been. <laughs> yeah, L- nice build up, failed execution. Yep. So, like I said, it doesn't deserve to be on our worst list, but it's disappointing. It's on my disappointing list. Um, number eight on my favorite list. Of 2013 is The Conjuring. Did you see that? I, I don't do scary movies. They're just boring to me. Uh, this one was good. Um, you got it on disc, I'll borrow it from you. <laughs> I need to get it, actually. I just, uh, I just don't watch those kind of movies anymore because I already know what's going to happen. It's well, just This one doesn't... Okay, this was directed by James Wan, who did uh, the first Saw movie. He did uh, Death Sentence, uh, Insidious, Dead Silence. I All really, movies I never watched. <laughs> I really like his movies. Um, he 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 does it old school. He doesn't do jump scares, but when he does do a jump scare, he earns it. Jump scare isn't scary. A jump scare is startling. Yeah. I mean, I can jump out wearing a pink dress and a hula hoop and startle you. Or Actually, I'd probably hit the floor laughing if you did that. You know, you jump first. Or Freddy Krueger can jump out with his claws. You would get startled the same. Then you would get scared of Freddy. Nah, I'd punch him in the face. Okay. But you <laughs> to be really scared is not to be startled. And this movie, it has maybe one, two jump scares, but it builds up the suspense until that happens and earns that. Uh, the rest of it's all just creeping you out. Making you kind of scared just sitting there watching it. I mean, it, no, I have to watch and find out, but like saws and all that, I never could get into them because it was all pretty much just, you know, something just to start you, make you jump and scare. And I hate going to theaters and having some woman or a girl or even her boyfriend who screams more girlish than she does screaming in my ear at the theater while I'm trying to watch a movie. <laughs> 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 I kid you not, was it, uh, I think it was the first saw. I was sitting there watching it. And there's this girl behind me, you know, she's yelping and stuff. And then this one scene, I'm thinking it's her at first, but I turn around and it's her boyfriend screaming more girlish and louder than she was. So Frank was on a date with you that night? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was before I knew Frank. No, Frank doesn't like scary movies either. I just, I just don't do it for anymore. I, I like them when they're done right. Um, Let's go to, uh, <laughs> here's a good one on my worst list. I'm sorry, guys, but Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> you still won't let this go. Greatly made movie. It's put together beautifully. 
but. directed beautifully, acted beautifully, but they remade Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Why? Why, Mikey? Oh, to keep to not, keep not, it connected to the original not, 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 and not, not, to not, bring it's, the it's new audience into it. It's connected. It's connected from the first one. Spock's in this universe. <laughs> why? Why do you bring Khan back? Yes, my favorite villain well, it's from Star this, Trek. Okay, it's like we were, we were talking about with the first movie, and even in this movie, in our review, we did. This is a different timeline. So why do they have to do the same thing in this? different timeline well you've watched the shows in star trek right there's so many different versions of the universe is going on that some of them are bound to have some of the same aspects it's just <laughs> this is just the new generation version of wrath of Khan. this isn't an episode of star trek made for a, a <laughs> weekly showing this is oh. a big budget 150 million dollar movie don't yeah. do the same with thing with peter weller with robocop robocop who was in an episode of star trek enterprise yeah, I think he was. He was. Tricky here. Um, Sons of Anarchy recently. He directed a lot of those, actually. Did he? Wow. Yeah. Um, no, they should have done something different. I would have loved a movie with Khan if they had not done the same thing. I mean, yeah, you know, he needs Pretty the many outweigh the needs of the few. Seed in a big no, they did Wrath of Khan. I mean, they, they skipped over Space Seed. Yeah, do Space Seed. Fine, do that. Don't well, there do wasn't Wrath really Khan. a whole Wrath of Khan because he was by himself. He didn't have the whole crew. But they took elements from Wrath of Khan. Oh, yeah. And put it in there. No, don't do that. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> Wrath of Khan is considered He's one of the greatest science fiction films of all time. Don't, don't you're taint uber, it. You're uber nerding on me, man. I get it. I understand. I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm trying to rationalize it for you, and I'm apparently just making you matter. <laughs> no, nah, I've I've calmed down. You should see his bit. ears. <laughs> There's but, steam coming out. <laughs> um, like I say, it's a great movie. Should, they just went about it the wrong way, so that's why it's on my worst list. Not uh, disappointing. He thinks it's the worst. Uh, you know what? It's better than Star Trek Insurrection. <laughs> What's wrong with Insurrection? What's wrong with Insurrection? We need to watch that again. That movie's horrible. It's better than Nemesis. No, it's not. Or no, Nem- wait, what's the one I'm thinking Nemesis of? Nemesis was the last Next Generation one. Yeah, kind of hate the way they ended Data in that, but no, yeah. the, the first one, Generations, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, it's better than Generations. It is because generations. I'm like you. You 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 let Ferris Bueller's best friend kill Captain Kirk. Yeah. Uh, let me guess. He's Tuesday. An incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> he's an incompetent captain, and he caused the death of Captain Kirk. Yep. No. Anyway, off of Star and Trek. That way. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Let's get him off Star Trek before he gets real mad. Uh, best. Uh, I think you saw this one with me. Uh, Riddick. Yes. Oh, yes. Riddick was everything I hoped it would be. They got it's back like to the roots. Pitch Black could have been. Yeah, it, it's I granted, Pitch Black was a basis, and it, you know, didn't have the greatest following, but it had a cult following. Like, I saw it. You know, it was one of those movies that just kind of slipped in there. You didn't really hear much about it, and then all of a sudden it's there. And I think the first time I saw it, it was on a... Like TNT or something. It was like on Saturday. I was like, watch this. like, Pitch Black. What's this? I was like, oh, hey, look. That's Vin Diesel. I was like, hey, I think this is a movie I've heard people talking about. And I sit here and watch it. like, man, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, Pitch Black. A uh, little bit of trivia. I don't know if I told you this before. Uh, David Twothy. T-W-O-T-H-Y. Anyway. Twothy. Twothy. Who wrote and directed it. Twarthy. Yeah, he uh, was hired to write a script for Alien 3. And his script got turned down. They didn't like it. So he took that same script for Alien 3, renamed characters, Riddick, Ripley. Yeah. <laughs> we Basically, Pitch Black is Alien 3. What which, the original script was. And a better Alien 3, pretty much. Um, it didn't have a bald-headed Sigourney Weaver on a prison planet with... Rock from the TV show. Bald headed 
Riddick on a as a prisoner on a planet. Yeah. <laughs> with aliens. You I mean, can see the connection there, exactly. right? Exactly. Um yeah, they, you can see some of the ideas that went into Alien Three from that. They uh uh but when they did uh Chronicles of Riddick <laughs> I, I liked it. It was good. But they toned it down to a PG thirteen and he yeah. didn't really seem like the same character. No. I like the whole way it circled and came back and he ended up being who he was. Mm-hmm. And then in uh, uh, Riddick, the new one, they kind of like, well, let's get back to the roots. And so in the first 10 minutes, they threw all that out the window. But they did it well. And then it got to turn back into a, well, a Riddick movie. A Riddick movie. <laughs> and... Uh, it's got and how that happened. Think back, Fast and Furious. Remember the third one where Vin Diesel wasn't in it until the end. Yeah, he got the rights for Riddick back after Chronicles because after Chronicles it didn't do as good as the studio wanted. So it's like, all right, we're not greenlighting any more Riddick movies. We're done. Tokyo Drift comes out, and they're like, hey, we want to get Vin Diesel in on this. He goes, all right, I'll do a cameo, but. Don't pay me. I want the rights to Riddick back. And that's how Riddick came out. If it hadn't been for that, we'd have never seen, probably never seen another Riddick movie ever. Yeah. So that means Riddick is Vin Diesel's vanity project, I guess. Something. But a good vanity project. So uh, we got that one. And it's got Katie Sackhoff in it. Scott. (laughs) Starbuck, who I think stole the show almost. And that thing. <laughs> I'm a Kitty yeah. Sackoff fan. <laughs> um, I think you just like saying her name. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> PG, PG, we're on the radio. Uh, okay. We got uh, another one that's on my worst. worst. The worst. Which we already talked about, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs too. Yeah. Yeah. Um So we'll skip on over to a recent one I saw. Amanda liked this one. I tried to, but I could not like Anchorman 2. Really? No. I haven't seen it yet. It's not funny. uh, I think the best parts are in the previews. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Everything I laughed at was something that had nothing to do with Will Ferrell. I cannot stand Will Ferrell. I don't think he's funny. I don't think. He's got he's only, he's got one joke, and that's basically the Adam Sandler one joke to where I'm going to talk with uncontrollable volume in weird ways, and <laughs> plus they toned it down to PG-13. I think I I, I kind of l- laughed at the first one, but they had to tone it down on this one, and they just I don't know it was. Dumb. I mean, I was sitting there, I was like, what am I, a grumpy old man, man sitting here not laughing at everyone else, laughing? The people behind us were cracking up like crazy. But myself, I just was sitting there like, this isn't funny to me at all. And the parts with Steve Carell and uh, uh, Kristen Wiig, their characters, I was like, that's not funny either. I, <laughs> I was laughing at stuff like the other side characters, uh, Paul Rudd. Mm-hmm. He was cracking me up. The other guy, Paul the bald Rudd. The other guy, uh, the bald guy. He he owned a chicken uh, restaurant, but he said uh, you can't turn a profit if you sell chicken. So he would cook bats. <laughs> that that was funny. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Can't like he's all he was like, what, what is this? Just chicken? He's all stretching it out. It's a bat wing stretching out. <laughs> so I should wait for video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, I mean, like I said, it's got its. I don't know. I think moments. Will Ferrell peaked at Talladega Nights. But I've only seen a couple Will Smith movies that I liked. You mean Will Ferrell? Will, yeah. <laughs> I've seen more Will Smith, yeah. Uh, Will Ferrell, he, I liked Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> yeah. Which was that was like the first movie I saw. 15 years ago. Uh, yeah. I liked 
I like that movie that wasn't a comedy. I forget the name of it, where he was, this lady was writing a book, and he was the character in the book in real life, but didn't realize it. So everything she wrote affected him. Hmm. Um, I don't remember that one. I don't remember either. One thing I saw his that he did that wasn't a comedy was that Everything Must Go. Like his wife leaves him. Yeah. He's just camping out in the yard. And eventually sells off everything and moves or something. I like uh, I like the Austin Powers movies. <laughs> his parts in that. Yeah. That's about it. I just don't think he's funny. I never have. But uh, anyway, we'll move on to... Uh, Movies I like. Did you see Pacific Rim? No, I haven't. No? It was good. It was everything a summer blockbuster should be. Uh, they did it right. Del Toro directing it. It was awesome. Um, I'm kind of glad he ended up leaving The Hobbit to be able to make that. Because uh, he was supposed to direct The Hobbit movie. And his schedule just got backed up. And so he left and he made... Pacific Rim, and I thought it turned out great. The special effects looked great. The monsters looked great. I mean, they did it right. And uh, so since you haven't seen it, there's not much more to talk about. I'll watch it once you get the video of it. Yeah, I should go get it. It's out on video. DVD. Um, Worst, G.I. Joe Retaliation. (laughs) Did you see that? Yeah, how about the DVD? What do you think of it? Um, <laughs> kind of mixed bag. Uh, I don't like what they did to Duke and the rest of the Joes. I do like they finally got a Cobra Commander mask the right way. Do you miss Channing Tatum? Ah, uh, not really. Just the way they just like <laughs> got rid of him. You know, if you watch the original cartoon series, which I did as a kid, and I was a huge fan of. I owned every. Oh, yeah. fr- I, did I owned every friggin' GI Joe action figure vehicle. You name it, I had it. Duke supposedly died like five times during the cartoon series, but he always pulled out, pulled through, or was you know found found him alive. Would do you remember when they uh, it was supposed to come out at the beginning of the year? Yeah, and then it got delayed to summer. Yeah, the reason that happened was because Channing Tatum he had a far smaller part in that movie. Yep, and the studios were like we got this magic mike guy magic mike it came out he got really big suddenly and they were like we gotta have more of him in it so they pulled it and they didn't get much more of him in the movie yeah well he's got an extra maybe 10 minutes in the movie maybe but they reshot all that stuff spent they spent another hundred million dollars because of them pulling it you know, to get ten more minutes of Channing Tatum. Yeah, because they because of all the film that had already been printed, they pulled it like the week before. Yeah. it was supposed to come out. You know who probably got really mad was Mattel. <laughs> yeah, because they already had the toys on the shelf. Yep, <laughs> and they put them out to sell, and then the movie gets pulled, and then once the movie comes out, no one's interested in the toys anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so guess who's getting sued right about now? Probably. <laughs> um, one thing I was sad was to see was I kind of dug that Joseph Gordon-Levitt was Cobra Commander. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, what? What? What kind of third rock is this? But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I like Joseph Gordon- it was Gordon-Levitt. A, for me, it's a mixed bag. Um, I wanted it to be better. And it kind of fell flat. And when it got pulled, I thought, hey, maybe they're going to, you know, because I knew Duke was going to, you know, die in the beginning. I mean, that was the biggest part of the previews. You know, Joes are gone except for Flint, Roadblock, and Lady J. And Snake Eyes because he wasn't there. I I like that they had The Rock and Bruce Willis in it. Even though Bruce Willis looked like he was just there. There, yeah. (laughs) He's just there. When is the last time you saw Bruce Willis act like he liked to be in a movie? <laughs> Spendables 1 and 2. Really? He looked like uh, he wanted to be there. I don't know. Uh, Looper. I think he... Haven't seen that one yet. He tried in Looper. Looper's 
Oh, that's the one I forgot to put on my list. Yeah, there you go. Uh, my whole deal with G.I. Joe was I figured the whole getting pulled and, you know, for Channing Tatum, I figured they were going to bring Duke back towards the end. You know, he just – they found him. He was just all in a coma and jacked up. That's what I thought was going to happen, and it he went. He got blowed up. I got sorely disappointed. They could have pulled a, uh, Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park. The book, not the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he, in the book, he gets blown up, eaten by dinosaurs, and something else. And then he's back in the second book. <laughs> How do you survive an explosion and being ate by a dinosaur? Uh, by being Jeff Goldblum. Apparently. <laughs> Spielberg liked him, his character, so much that he insisted that he be back. Oh. Uh, you you got any of your own that you can think of? Uh, I didn't really see that many new ones this year, or the ones that came out this year, so I can't really. I mean, we're we're halfway through my list, and we're not even <laughs> halfway through the show. How much time we got? Oh, we got an hour and a half. Are you serious? <laughs> Wow, looks like we're doing movie news and stuff too. Uh, uh, well, not that no. long with commercial breaks, but yeah. well, I think once we get into some of the other ones, I'll have more to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Just I didn't see as many movies you did this year, you know. And I, I only went and saw the ones I wanted to see. I don't so understand they didn't that because I'm married and you're not. <laughs> I have kids and you don't. Go see movies. I Go. have a job that sometimes doesn't let me get home till after the movie starts. And then you have a job that sometimes doesn't call you for four days to do a job. <laughs> well, never know when that's going to happen. <laughs> and I don't like going to movies by myself. Plus, not everything came here. Yeah. We have to drive places. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to take a short break and uh, play some commercials to pay for this. <laughs> and figure and, out what's uh, going to happen next. Not not you guys watching this on video, just you guys on listening to us. So you guys watching on video, uh, blink your eyes a couple times. We'll be right back. You guys on the radio, uh, you're listening to Movies on the Radio, Check Your Brain Edition with James Fight and Mike Davis. Yep, yep. Um, KBYG 106.3. We'll be back in just a few. And we're back on Movies on the Radio on KBYG 106.3. I'm James Fight with Mike Davis. How's it going? And uh, depending on what we decided to do, you may have listened to some music from the movies. You may not have. Uh, <laughs> forgive us. This is our first pre-recording that's not a known music show. Yeah. We don't know how much more we got to talk, and normally we play music and take breaks, uh, but... We figured to do a pre-recorded live show is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oxymoron right there. Yeah, a pre-recorded live show. Uh, so, it like, if we, yeah, we don't want to get to a point where we run out of <clears throat> topics here and go, well, start looking at each other so like, what do we do now? <laughs> what What did you do last night? Uh, well. Well, anyway, I was here at your house, you know what I did last night. We are doing our uh, best and worst of 2013. Uh, mostly his Mostly mine uh, Mikey is getting on to me for not printing out a list So he can look through it <laughs> Watch this because I wanted to watch I, My thing is I only went and watched the movies I wanted to watch That I knew I would enjoy Let's do a little side topic Okay we both went and saw together uh, White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen <laughs> Two of my favorites To put two, those two on my favorites Well no no To which one is good Better than the other How about that Well <laughs> Which one's better than the other? Hmm. The same I would movie. almost go with White House Down just because it had more of the, uh, the the kind of the lighter side. Buddy cop. Kind yeah, of kind thing. of a buddy cop deal. The Olympus is Fallen was kind of more straightforward and serious. And uh, one for, was rated R. One was PG thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one was director of Independence Day, Day and, so that was White House Down. Yeah. Um, I mean, they were both equally good. It's just I enjoyed them for different reasons. Like the Olympus has fallen, more the tactical, you know, more realistically what possibly could happen. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. White House down, that's just a little too out there. Although when we did our review of Olympus has fallen, <laughs> I, my first thing I said to you was how much of that was crap 
<laughs> How much was real? You're like a whole lot of crap and some real. <laughs> uh huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who puts a four power zoom sight on a submachine gun built for close quarters combat? How does an airplane get past <laughs> the U.S. military and mm-hmm. shoot up the White House? Yep. In, the, in this post nine eleven world, uh huh. Not not too likely. Um, you forgot to start the timer. I forgot. We're also timing this, so we know we're how much time we're going to talk. This. He's just now starting the timer. No, it's easy. See, we just uh, subtract the time uh, I have on my screen here. Technicalities, but anyways. Anyway. Now, between two, I'd, I'd say I like the White House down better just because of the buddy cop and, you know, the comedy in it, even though it was still kind of a serious movie. It was more fun. It was. Yeah. I mean, Olympus has fallen. That was just, you know. It was like 90s action. 90s, yeah, 90s action. Which is not a bad thing. That's No. I miss miss 90s action. <laughs> Gerard Butler, I'm going to do this to you, and he does it. <laughs> At least he wasn't in a movie with Katherine Heigl. <laughs> no, he was. Yeah, he was. What's wrong All with her? Right. She's a hottie. Mm, she's... Nah. Not I'm not going to get in that on this <laughs> show. <laughs> Uh, she's up there with Will Ferrell. I can't stand her. Oh. Well, <laughs> she's a diva. Uh, speaking of 90s action, let's go to my worst list. Uh, Good Day to Die Hard. I haven't seen that one yet. Wow, it's bad. Like, really bad. John McClane in Russia. I'm just like, that just doesn't make sense. Well, Bruce Willis, he's given up like we were talking about earlier. It's uh, He just is there. And this movie is, they, they made it rated R. They like Die Hard should be, but I mean the last one was better. What was it? Uh, Live Free, Live Free or Die, or Die Hard? Hard. Yeah, that one was way better than this one. With oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Justin. Justin Long. Yeah. And Kevin Smith. And Kevin Smith. <laughs> um. Brought the fuzz into my inner sanctum. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, if you want to hear some fun stories of Bruce Will about Bruce Willis, listen to Kevin Smith's stand up "Too Fat for 40. The <laughs> whole thing is talking about how he had to direct him and cop out, and it's got some hilarious stories about it. Oh, I want to see that movie. It just uh, looks funny. What cop out? Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> you still want to see it, though. Scattering. <laughs> <laughs> of course I want to see it. Uh, yeah, directed by Kevin Smith. It was his way of getting money to make Red State. What? Kevin Smith. His last movie, Red State. It's a movie basically about the uh, Westboro Church people and how crazy they are. Oh. Um, I had uh, heard nothing about it. It's a really good movie, actually. Uh, I think it's on Netflix. You can watch it. I have to look it up. Uh, but yeah. yeah, anyway, good, good day to die hard. It was shaky cam everywhere, editing like crap. Uh, Bruce Willis just—it's like he was just there as his own stand-in. <laughs> um, it had very brief moments of its own. The logic and the way things worked. It wasn't a Die Hard. Die Hard was, is a series where, at least the first three, you rooted for McClane. You knew he was in a possible situation, and he seemed mortal. He got hurt. He oh, he got, got tore injured. up. And this new one, it's like he's a super man person. It's like he can't get hurt. I was like, well, no. No. I was always thinking, no it's, matter what happened, he was getting tore up as the film went along and still pushing through it. Oh, yeah. I mean, my feet still hurt when I see broken glass Ugh. after watching Die Hard. <laughs> um, also, one of the greatest Christmas movies ever. Yep. <laughs> I haven't said that the before, first have two. I? <laughs> first two. After that, they got away from the Christmas theme. All right. Let's get to uh, a good movie. A good movie. Um, John Dies at the End. Have you seen that? Huh? John dies at the end. That's the name of the movie. Oh, I was like, 
thought you were still talking about Die Hard. I was like, <laughs> John McClane died, 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 died at the end. What? You spoiled oh. it. No, the movie on my good list, uh, John Dies at the End. Never heard it of was, it. Uh, it's also on Netflix. You can uh-huh. stream it. Uh, it's worth watching. That movie is like a... Oh, it's like an even better Donnie Darko. I mean, never it's, saw that. Never saw Donnie Darko. Nope. You should borrow that. It's on <laughs> Netflix, I think. Uh, watch it. Uh, John dies at the end. There is no way I can explain what it is about. Uh, no way at all. Uh, the soy sauce is the meaning of life, though. Soy sauce is the meaning of life. It's That's nice to know. They they made this movie like it was a 80s, 90s, uh, 80s movie. They used practical effects as much as they could. Use CGI as little as possible. Uh, it's about these guys who fight the paranormal. And the fate of the world is before them. And... John dies at the end. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um... I can't recommend it enough. You have to uh, think for yourself a whole lot in this movie. There's so much going on, and it's it's all logic. Well, not logical. I, I, you got to think. You cannot check your brain on this one. You have to really pay attention, and probably watch it more than once. Kind of like a uh, in Inception. Yeah, this one's a lot weirder than Inception, but uh, yeah, it's you one. Multiple that, watchings are required to understand the yeah the meat of the product. You'll need to watch it again, like Fight Club. <laughs> you watch it more than once, you'll catch something else. It's just really, I really highly recommend it. If you got Netflix streaming, stream it. Uh, if you don't, go out Redbox it Red, if you can. Redbox stream it. Roku, Hulu. Yeah. I mean, it, it Netflix. Was a, it was an independent movie, pretty Voodoo. much. It's got Paul Giamatti in it, also. Uh, it's got some other uh, names in there, but yeah, I, I really can't recommend it enough. It's one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Um, I'll check it out. I'm morbid curiosity. <laughs> Let's see. Some of yours have been on my worst list, uh, and I got more on my good list than I have on my worst list now. Huh? So we'll go with another good movie. Um, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I know you haven't seen that. Yeah, that just came out. I haven't got a chance to see it. Yeah, I went and saw it the other night. I don't have anybody to take out on a date to go watch this. I, um, you took I, the wife I, I took the wife who, she said I tricked her before we got there. She's like, you tricked me. I thought we were going to go see something I want to see. I was like, this is the only thing playing right now. And, well, it's better than taking you to see 47 Ronin. <laughs> <So much. laughs> No, she gets a look at Keanu Reeves. That's much better than Ben Stiller. No, she was really happy. I took her to see this. She loved this movie, and I loved it. This movie is beautiful. And I did not realize Ben Stiller directed it. Really? Yeah. Wow. I did not know it, because this movie, man, he... Well, it does look interesting. I mean, I've seen the previews. I wanted to go see it. I just forgot it was out already. it's, It's great. I mean, visually, I mean, when I saw these the previews for it, I l- leaned over to Amanda at a movie when we saw it. And I was like, this movie looks like it's going to be really great or really bad. <laughs> visually, so 50, it's 50-50. There's yeah, no one there. I'm like, visually, this looks intriguing as can be. But there is a big chance it can all fall apart on itself for being too ambitious. <laughs> but, man, he... I can't think of any other movies that have got too ambitious for their own good. I'm like, Ben Stiller, please make more movies that you have your heart in. Stop doing Meet the Fockers and (laughs) Night at the Museums and do more movies like this. Tropic Thunder. Yes, Tropic Thunder was great, (laughs) and he directed that one. I got full faith in him. I mean, he's got some shots in this movie that I'm just like, man, that's... You know, the weird part about him is he doesn't think he's as funny as everybody else thinks he is. I don't think he's funny in certain movies that he just gets a paycheck on. Yeah. <laughs> but when he does something that but he like wants to kind, do, yeah. yeah, he is great. He's Zoolander, I think, is a classic. <laughs> and yeah, he, he's hilarious when it's something that it's him doing to do. what he wants to do. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it falls into that, uh, I call it the Nick the Nicolas Cage theory. <laughs> <laughs> you let Nicolas Cage be Nicolas Cage, and he's awesome. You take a, you tell Nicolas Cage he can't be Nicolas Cage, well, that movie's not going to be that great. <laughs> hmm, can we think of recent examples? A, f- a few, probably. Uh, knowing, um, what else has he been in lately? He's been in a lot Ghost of crap. Two. The, the movies that I think of where he's great is stuff like uh, Bad Lieutenant, uh, Bringing Out the Dead, Face Drive Off. Angry. Drive Angry. Oh, <laughs> that man, was that's classic a great Nicolas movie. Cage. Uh, I love me some Nicolas Cage, and Brandon's not here to tell me I'm dumb for it. <laughs> oh, well, he'll get over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't edit this out, Brandon. <laughs> um Let's go to another. Let's see how many. Not I got to mention left. the fact the man has to take every job offered to him anyway. He's a. Uh, yeah, he's kind of in trouble. He's a That's little it. bit manic depressive, and he tends to like spend tons of freaking money when he's in his depressed state or manic stage. But he named his son Kyle. <laughs> That's That's why he loves him. Uh, well, let's finish my worst list before we get to talking about that. I <laughs> uh, see. I got three left on my best, two on my worst. Uh, Maybe we'll think of something else to add to the worst while we're at it. You've seen this one on my worst. Uh Movie 43. Movie 43. (laughs) Wow. Who was smoking crack when they greenlit this thing and then put it out? I want to know how much blackmail they have on all these celebrities to do this. Something. See, this is... Either, Either that or they were all rolling on ecstasy and filmed it and then got done and it was already produced. They're like, oh, man, we can't stop this. Well, see, when this was coming out, I I had hope for it, actually. I was hoping for a, another Amazon Women on the Moon. <laughs> you ever seen that? No. Watch that movie. Anybody that hasn't seen it, look for the movie Amazon Women on the Moon. It's not for the kids. Uh, it's made back in the late 80s, uh, maybe early 90s. And it's about a guy who's... Well, not just a guy. It's It's got this storyline where you're watching this movie on cable and then it switches to commercials and all the commercials have celebrities and stuff doing stuff in it. And it's got kind of a plot about a guy trying to go on a date, but he's it doesn't work out. So he's watching this movie on TV and it's one of those comedies where it's just all these sketches thrown together, tied loose, loosely together. And that's what movie 43 looked like it was going to be. And man, I, I'm like, you. So the joke is, Wolverine has male anatomy on his chin, and that's the joke. I chuckle, I chuckle, and then I'm over it. <laughs> that's the, just the first skit. <laughs> the joke is, Hit Girl has started. Her period, and they don't know what to do. <laughs> I chuckled once. The joke is, <laughs> uh, they build iPods to look like a woman with no clothes on, and Richard Gere is the president of the company. He's Steve Jobs, pretty much. And teenage boys are getting injured from these things. Um, and the only one that I never chuckled is the at female that. on the board. Of the yeah, I, I never chuckled on that one. I was just like, Richard Gere is in this. Last thing he did before wow. that was Hotchkey. I need to pop in the jackal and watch him <laughs> chase some Bruce Willis. Watch Bruce Willis kiss a dude. Watch Bruce Willis shoot uh, Jack Black's arm off with a remote control gun. I told you the sight was off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, movie 43 is, it's a disaster to watch. I mean, we watched it <laughs> and we I've kept, seen it twice. Yeah. He watched it second time with us just to watch us watch it. I think. Yeah. I already seen it as a and, house in Dallas and he had it on the, he had the ADT or whatever on TV on demand stuff. Yeah. We watched that and killer Joe <laughs> with Matthew McConaughey. You'll never look at the chicken wing the same again. How was Killer Joe? You need to watch it. 
Would it be on your best or worst list? <laughs> um, I think it'd probably kind of go on the best just for the sheer twistedness of it. That's the one where he plays a uh, uh, hitman, right? He's a cop, but he's a hitman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, a, that's something I wanted to see. Huh. It wasn't going to play anywhere. Gina Gershwin's in it. Yeah, it wasn't going to play anywhere around here because it was no. rated NC-17. Oh, it deserves that rating. Oh, I'll put that on my list. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's but get movie to Movie 43 is just a hot mess. Yeah, it's it's bad. We're really bad guys. <laughs> With a lot of A list celebrities on it, and you're gotta wondering well, who who convinced Bride, blackmailed, what they had to do to get all these people to agree to some of this. Yeah, I mean you watch the end of the credits, you know, they're showing some of the bloopers. Like Hugh Jackman doing his thing and he's all like, Man, I just I can't man, this is killing me. I can't do this. Are you serious? Why like, would you do it? <laughs> you know. Got him build up as one of the, you know, the hunks of Hollywood. All the women love Hugh Jackman. And then they pull this stunt on him. And I'm just like, <laughs> really? Yeah. You don't do that to Wolverine. <laughs> uh, well, they did X-Men Origins to Wolverine. Yeah. So, so I guess having <sighs> good When good intentions try too hard. On the next uh, world. Though. All right. Uh, on my good list. Um. The World's End. It's number three. Oh, I need to borrow that and watch it. Yeah, you do. Uh, we we relived it almost for Amanda's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> for someone's, we're not going to say what year birthday. <laughs> yeah, she, she's doing the negative birthdays now, my we, wife. We invented or reinvented the movie in downtown San Angelo. We did a, a pub crawl. Um <laughs> And we were pretty much successful, except for the one that decided to close early and the one we couldn't get into because it was so freaking full. There was a line out the door 50 people deep. But I never ran into any uh, robots in the, Me in the bathroom. Which This movie, I mean, it's it, in the previews, they show everything. Uh, these guys going on a pub crawl to get to each pub, have a drink at each one, and get to the last one, which is called The World's End. But while doing this, they realize the town's been taken over by robots. <laughs> With glowing blue blood. <coughs> yeah, so what I wish they had done was pulled a uh, From Dusk Till Dawn with the uh, advertising. Don't tell people that's w- what's going to happen. Because it was entertaining as could be watching that with my wife. Sitting Dude, that here. that might actually work. She did not know about the robots. She, she never she, saw the previews. No. She didn't. She didn't know what the movie was about. I bought it. I brought it home. My pop and Ann, we're watching it. She's loving this movie. She's loving the whole thing with the storyline with all these guys, these old friends, and what's going Until. on with them. And then the robot thing happened, and it kept going on. And she leans over, and she's like, "They're they're hallucinating, right?" And I was like, "No, they're not that drunk, <laughs> man." She got mad. <laughs> she doesn't like sci-fi. <laughs> when that happened, she was like... We couldn't drag her to a sci-fi movie if we tried. Uh, she was like, forget this movie. And she went to sleep. <laughs> but it was funny to watch her reaction to it. Now, I continue to watch it. I got to the end of it. And that scene, uh, that climax scene at, towards the end, it's genius what they do, uh, the dialogue and stuff in the situation, and then the ending shot in the movie is perfect. This movie well, don't spoil it for me. I haven't I'm watched not, it. That's why I'm not spoiling it for anybody. I'm just saying <laughs> it was perfect the way they made it, and that's why it's number three on my list. So I got. So I definitely want to watch it. Yeah, you do. Um, I'll let you take it whenever you leave. <laughs> Sweet. So I got two more on my best list, one more on my worst. Let's do another one on my best. Uh, number two, uh, most people might know this is on there, Oblivion. Tom Cruise. Excellent. Very good movie, even though it is a live-action version of Wally. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, if you're going to do a live-action version of a cartoon, it, why not Wally? It's a great movie. 
<laughs> so, what's your what's your opinion of? No, I I really like the movie. Um, when the uh, twist happened, I was not expecting that based on the previews. Yeah, there's a few twists in it. There's a couple. I know a lot of people who figured them out though. I was yeah. surprised. My brother, he was like, "Oh man, it would have been great if it wasn't so obvious what was going to happen." I was like, "Oh, I guess you're smarter than me. I don't know." <laughs> oh yeah, some of it, you know. A couple of hints dropped early. I was like, okay, something more is going on here than what they've let on. And then when it happened, I was like, okay, that's not quite what I thought it was going to be. But all in all, it's still a good movie, you know. Well put together. Oh, yeah. Um, I like Tom Cruise in movies. He's weird in real life. Um, You watched the Jack Reacher yet? It's on Netflix. Not yet. I did. Is it any good? It's all right. <laughs> is it on your best or worst? It'd be on the worst for just being not what I thought it was going to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're making a sequel, you know. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> we can't get a Dread 2, but we can get a Jack Reacher 2. Oh, yeah, you're the one that sent me that, aren't you? Uh-huh. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I haven't seen Jack Reacher. It's it's all right, but it's... I don't know. Tom Cruise has got this other sci-fi movie coming out where it's... He's fighting in a war. He's like been drafted, and they wear oh, yeah. these big mechanical suits. And he keeps uh, going back in time. Yeah, he every time he dies, he starts back over the day before, like it's Groundhog Day. Mm-hmm. And Groundhog so, Day was sci-fi in a war. Uh, wouldn't be the first time it's been done. <laughs> nope. Uh, there's this old movie with Jonathan Silver called uh, Twelve O One. Where he kept going back, re- reliving the same day. Mm. Looks uh, interesting. I'll watch it. <coughs> Judgment to be revealed later. But yeah, Oblivion. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, it's an it's amazing video film. Now. Looks beautiful. Uh, well acted. Good story. Great soundtrack. Um and we'll go on to my number one worst movie. Bum, bum, bum. A 2013. <laughs> this one deserves to be on the worst list. Even though How I many people saw. are going to get angry with you on this? Not many, I don't think. I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with your Star Trek analogy. Yeah, a lot of people will agree, disagree with that. I went and saw this movie two times. Mm-hmm. I think that was it. Just two times. Only twice. Just to make sure. <laughs> just to make sure he hated it that much. I went and saw Star Trek twice, too. Just to make sure. I was less mad the second time. On this one, no. I disliked it even more. <laughs> I've seen it now a third time. So. I dislike it even more. And what's the name of this movie? Man of Steel. Man of Steel. I <laughs> love Superman. Yes, he does. It's like it would take a lot for me to dislike a Superman movie. I I even enjoy the crappy Superman movies. Superman Returns. Uh, Superman three. Superman Returns. Eh. It's all Superman right. four. You the know, Quest for Peace. Quest for Peace is better than Superman three. Returns and Man of Steel. <laughs> Superman three better than Part four and Returns and Man of Steel. Richard Pryor's having the time of his life. You can't get... But, I mean, it's Richard Pryor. Come on. Um, <laughs> Man wow. of Steel. Let's hear it. Let it go. Shaky Cam is the main... I'm the getting main real players. tired of that. It, it has its place, but too many movies just rely on Action it. scenes, but not when uh, Papa Clark Kent, whatever. Papa Kent and Clark Kent are talking about, you know, school buses. You don't <laughs> get a tripod. I have a tripod right here in front of us. Right there. You don't need shaky cam. Good. Yeah. Get a box to sit your camera on. <laughs> Tape it to a tree There's limb. There's so something. many plot holes in this movie. Oh yes. The destruction of Metropolis. Superman doesn't do that. Nope. Superman isn't. You know. Dark and brooding. He's fantastical. You know, he... Mm -hmm. he, 
fact, one of his big his weaknesses they picked on in comics and the in the Christopher Reeve movies was how he would stop in the middle of a fight to protect the to people. protect the people. Yeah. If a sky if he's chasing somebody and a skyscraper's falling, he'd stop and save the people below the rubble, and then he would go continue pursuit, not just keep trashing Metropolis. Yeah. He would get injured saving people. They, uh. Oh. <laughs> I have to snap his Kryptonite. Neck. They didn't what happened cr- to Kryptonite? <coughs> they didn't it's now the air. Yeah, yeah. The that's, air is his weakness. The I atmosphere. I think that's what they did. They replaced Kryptonite with. They yeah. replaced Kryptonite with air. Um. They. I gotta snap Zod's neck to save these people. Okay. No. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hand in front of eyes. Yeah, exactly. He's impervious to injury. Just mm-hmm. Cover your hand over his eyes. It will burn probably. Maybe. And then fly up. What what you guys fly up while holding him. Uh, Take him I mean Yeah, don't try and wrestle him down. <sighs> Take him out the window. Why? <laughs> You see the headache he's getting? Why? He's getting a migraine right now. Why? Well, they can't see me on the radio. They can see me on the video. Well, on the video, yeah. But I'm Man. describing it. They, like, this movie, I I had so much hope for it. I have a Superman tattoo. <laughs> he does. I like Superman. <laughs> and, and they, well, I like it too. No, I, I just had some issues with the way you know it's supposed to be. A whole separate story from the Christopher Reeves. Superman Returns has nothing to do with this. This is a retelling of the origin of Superman. And some of the stuff they did was okay, but some of it just flies in the face of everything anyone knows about Superman. Why do we need read a, a comic book or not? Why do we need an origin story? Everyone knows because Superman. some people don't read comic books. No, my mother knows. How Superman got here. Some Everybody people don't. knows. It's see, Superman Returns did it right. They didn't do a reboot. They just were like, well, here's what's going on. Yeah. Superman was doing this. Here he is. They got that part right. He left. He's back. <coughs> but I don't know. Kevin Space did an excellent Lex Luthor. He did an excellent Gene Hackman Lex Luthor. <laughs> He played Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. Um, yeah, he doesn't love Superman at all. <laughs> what else, chap, grinds your gears on this? That's... Uh, his costume. Uh, that was <laughs> costume? Oh, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad, but... The the oh the fact that uh, they did away with the red trunks and made it kind of like a unitard it's, type it's, deal. It's all right. It's it's like it's more like armor than a costume. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it took him thirty years of training to be able to harness his powers on Earth, but Zod was able to do it in five twenty minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like. That Here he is, a full-grown sense. man trying to learn to cope with this insanity happening to him. But Superman, who's been dealing with it since he was a baby, taking forever and still doesn't quite know how to use all his powers as well as he'd like to. Uh, it's kind of like they, they they nerfed him is what they did. His Earth dead could not stand him. I couldn't stand Kevin Costner's <laughs> Papa can't. Mm. No, that you he is the dumbest <laughs> version of that I've ever seen. I'm like, Stupid. oh, you deserve to get sucked up in that tornado of being so dumb. Send send your superhuman son out there to save the dog. Come on, man, this is. Oh. He's all like, no, and they try no, to play hold, it off as he it. needs to learn a lesson. He, he doesn't need a. <laughs> oh, this movie's bad. <laughs> it's hard for me to. 
do this. It's hard for him to articulate how much he hates this movie. No, I should have made a list, a top 10 list just for this movie. <laughs> top 10 list. Why? Top 50,000 reasons why James Fight hates Man of Steel. It's bad. I can't wait until the next one comes out and it's see how bad. you just, you're going to have a meltdown. Oh, they're going to drag Batman down with that one. Yeah, drag Batman down, and now they're trying to pull in Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot. Yeah. Totally the wrong person to play an Amazon princess. I'm, I'm That's just, a topic for another story. No, I'm, I'm, Converting to Marvel. <laughs> I don't know. Train wreck. Um, all right, so that was so, my number one worst. That was my top ten worst. See, I don't know if I really I, – I enjoyed it, but I'd had my issues with it. So Man of Steel? Yeah, I think it'd be – I think it'd be on that worst list, but more like a disappointment because it had potential. Well, that's why it was so disappointing to me. Yeah, it had the potential to do it, and they just messed up so many things in – you don't need air. Air is his weakness. So does that mean when he flies in outer space, he's toast? That's the whole thing. He, he doesn't need to breathe in outer space. He can fly in outer space. He can fly through solar system. He can fly through the burning corona of a sun. But air so is what well, makes him lose his power. He can hold his breath for a very long time. So could he not just held his breath while yeah. on the ship? while on the ship. The atmosphere, that's, that's the whole thing. That's what threw me off on it. That's what really, that was the biggest thing that now, made me not like here, this movie the way I wanted to. Here you go. Why is Lois Lane on that ship? Yeah. There's no reason. There's that one part where the chick says Zod wants her to come with us too. Why? Why? There's never a reason why. The only reason she is on that ship is for plot convenience so that she can get the little key chip from Superman to put in the slot to activate... Jor-El. Jor-El to tell her how to stop uh, Zod and help release Vent the Superman. atmosphere from the ship. Yeah, that's there was never once given a single reason why he wanted her on that. How did he even know about her? Exactly. There's n- that that drove me insane. Up until that point, the movie was okay. I could. I could almost tolerate the Kevin Costner as his dad. Deal with it, but yeah, stuff like that just. Ugh. But up to there, and then everything from that point in the movie on the destruction of Metropolis and him snapping Zod's neck and all that, just I'm like, okay, they've totally changed Superman. It's, it's like Batman and Robin all over again. Uh, Bat nipples. I I had hope for Zack Snyder. He did good on Three Hundred and uh, <laughs> Watchmen. He, they're going to have to pull something out of their hat to fix this because uh, yeah, Man of Steel, I'm going to say it had potential, but it came out as a hot mess in the last half hour of the movie. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that, we went so, on for like So before he has an aneurysm, let's go ahead and do your best number, movie of the year. Well, everyone knows what this Numero is. Numero uno. My number one movie, favorite movie of 2013, of course, is Gravity. <laughs> you saw what about it, right? Elysium. You forgot about Elysium. Uh, Elysium's it's not on my worst, not on my best. Not good enough to make top ten. No, no. Okay, <laughs> it's uh, Elysium's. It's it's all right. The more I think about it, the less I like it. Oh, I'll don't think about it then. <laughs> but gravity, not gravity. a whole lot going on there. We're two characters, basically one. Yeah, you have to have a lot of screen presence to pull that off. And Sandra Bullock pulled it off. Pulled it off. Yeah, uh, internet video win. We <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we spent almost an entire show talking about Gravity. We did pretty much. So there's not much more I could. It was tell that you good. About it. I mean, if you miss it in theaters, buy it on DVD. If it hits. What doesn't hit Redbox first or something? Uh, or streaming I don't know. or something? On the man. Whenever you can find it, when Gravity comes out, give it a watch. Check it out. Yeah, it's it's uh, worth a watch. Everything sure. from acting to writing to man, the sound design mm-hmm. that they did with that, where there's no sound in space, and how it's they amazing. put you there in the character shoes. It's it's more almost more like an experience. Yeah. And this is one I say, see in 3D. It works. Uh, 
one of the few times when 3D actually works in the benefit of the movie rather yeah, than against it. Yeah, it's not it. a gimmick. It adds to the experience. There's a lot going on. Uh, I went and saw it three times at the theater, and it was amazing. I was going to go see it another time. I was supposed to oh, take yeah, Amanda. It twice. Me and Amanda talked about going to see it at IMAX, but we never made it. But, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I, it's a watch. I have very, very little complaint with it. In fact, I can't think of anything I would complain about gravity. It is the polar opposite of Man of Steel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, Can you I don't tell know. he hates that movie? I don't think everybody can tell how much you... It's not... They really need to see it in your face. It's not really... The disgust in your eyes. Is it hate... Or is it just sadness? <laughs> I think it's a mixture of sadness and loathing. Man. I don't, I, I, if you had a time machine, would you go back and stop it? Man is still from being made? Yeah. Yeah. Or at least change it to where it worked? I would change it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it is. Man is still is not supposed to be set in gritty reality. It's supposed to be... Superman is fantastical, like I said. Uh... Now, on the other hand, gravity is very realistic. I mean, there there's a couple places in where you're like, I don't think that would work in real life. But then I think back to Apollo 13 and the crazy outrageous stuff they had to do to get back home. I'm like, you know what? Maybe it would work. Possible. Watch up Before you go see Gravity, go watch Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks. And look at all the crazy little things that Kevin they had to Bacon. do to make it work, to get back. I mean, they they had to come up with a way to make this th- them get there with just enough power to operate a coffee maker. That's all they had to use. Mm-hmm. They It was crazy. 21 amps. They, they f- made a filter out of little bitty pieces they found in the ship. And... You know, you see the stuff, and then you watch Gravity, and you see the things where you're like, I don't think that would really... Well, you know what? It might. It might. And there, there's one part with the fire extinguisher where I'm just like, but you know what? It's possible. Wally, man. They did it in Wally. Yeah, they did. So, <clears throat> that's my... It's plausible. <laughs> My top ten, my top worst. Um, and best. Yeah, my top ten best and worst. Um, we're going to take a little break. We'll come back with some honorable mentions. and uh, Maybe a few random ones are just thrown in there. Yeah, I mean, I got some others that I liked and stuff that I saw throughout the year. And we'll talk about those and uh, – on so you're listening to movies on the radio check brain edition check your brain productions uh you can go check us out on facebook uh checkbrain.com uh bigspringfilm.org and uh you're listening to 106 6.3 sorry all the blood his is brain is so from scrambled Steel, from yeah. talking about man of steel yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, were you listening to this on that radio thing? I, I thought he had a meltdown after Star Trek Into Darkness. Oh man, after this movie, I thought his head was going to explode. <laughs> Remember that one scene in Scanners when the dude's head explodes? Yeah, that yeah. was this guy. <laughs> and then it happened nine times in Scanners too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, James Fight, Mike Davis here. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be, we'll be back be, be, be. here in a bit. <laughs> Porky Pig. <laughs> All right, we're back for our last little segment on movies on the radio. Check brain edition. On uh, KBYG 106.3, I'm James Fight. I'm Mike Davis. And we just did our uh, top ten best and worst. Mostly his best and worst. Yeah. My my top ten best and worst with Mikey's commentary. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. We, we were thinking that. Uh, we got a little bit more time. Do some honorable mentions, maybe. Movies that could have made the list but fell short in some way. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about Elysium. Elysium. See, which more, was a good movie in its own. It, it was good, but the more I think about it, the less I like it. Uh, Jodie Foster being a total. Yeah. 
uh, warmongering, hating. The I don't know. There was a lot of shaky cam person. in that too. Yeah, <laughs> some, but not nearly as much. It uh, I don't know the. My brother sent me a little write up that he did a review of it. <laughs> I was just like, "Whoa, you really did not like it." <laughs> wow. Um, let's see if I can find it here. He, uh, <laughs> he texted it. See me. if I can find how much his brother hates this movie. Yeah, which I gotta respect his opinions on stuff like that. He's like, Elysium. In my humble opinion. A script by a 12-year-old. I mean, come on. How many weapons does a society need that are designed to blow up only one person at a time? For a trouble of actors with Tourette's syndrome and a cameraman with Parkinson's disease. For a troop of actors. Troop. Troop? Troop? It's pronounced troop. Oh. Uh, it seems to me the only uh, adults on the project were in charge of visualizing the space station. <laughs> so I was it like, looked like Halo. What are you talking about? That's what I told him. I was like, you know, I, I agree with most of that, but it's still the closest to a Halo movie we'll ever get. For now. For now. Well, we got the Halo. Have you seen TV the Ford Unto Dawn series? Yeah, but that wasn't at the theater. No. It's uh, on Netflix, though, the whole thing uninterrupted. I have it on Blu ray, actually. Oh, yeah, he bought the Blu ray. Um, it's possible they just got to find the right people to do it. You know, Forward Under Dawn, there's an honorable mention that came out this year. Yeah, yeah. If anyone likes the Halo series, Forward Under Dawn, that's that's a great little movie to watch. It's a little web series, kind of a teaser into Halo Four. Yeah, um, all to explain one character. Yeah, <laughs> who who's briefly in Halo Four. Mm-hmm. Um, what are what are some movies that you want to see that are coming out? They're coming up soon? Well, that came out that you never got a chance yeah. to see. Oh. Well, the Pacific Rim, I didn't get a chance to see that one. I wanted to. Um, World's End, you know, you got that. I can catch that one. Yeah. Um, other than that, pretty much everything I wanted to see that I know that I can remember. I'm, there's a lot of stuff I don't remember that came out. Or, well, not. Catching Fire, Hunger Games. Did you see that? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Twice. Yeah. It was, uh, that would be in my top ten. That that's year. one that's uh, I had it on my top until I got too Hobbit. many. Yeah, I had that on my list, and then I had too many, so I took it off. Uh, Bad Grandpa was Bad on my Grandpa, top. Yeah, <laughs> that was kind of the unexpected. That was good. It was Johnny Knoxville. Everybody's like, "Oh man, it's just it's Jackass number four. Just it's only Johnny Knoxville." And yeah. surprisingly enough, they actually wrote a script. Yeah, there is a loose storyline. Loose, very loosely told yeah. story <laughs> throughout all the uh, shenanigans. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty good little story, actually, yeah. I think. I almost thought uh, the part where they, he meets the father and yeah. those bikers are there, I really thought that dude was about to get pummeled. Like, they were yeah. literally about to nail this guy. I'm like, man, you got to know the producers. Everybody about ready to run in there and stop this because – most of the people in this film had no idea they were being filmed until after the fact. And then, you know, Johnny Knoxville does his thing, and then he runs out, and then all of a sudden the director comes in, all right, everybody, y'all just been participating. Y'all are going to be in Bad Grandpa. You know, they're all freaking out, screaming, hollering. Some of them are mad, ready to beat him up. Then they find out they're in the movie, and they all just start laughing, going, oh, my God, I can't believe I got caught in this. Uh. Yeah, that, see, that's a movie where it made me laugh hard. A lot. And that's what a comedy is supposed to do. And the fact that it had this loose storyline going along with it, it was kind of a sweet little story. It, made, it, made, it. it actually made it a little bit funnier to me. It is. Like, could you imagine being a little kid, having this grandpa, getting into all this stuff? So, I I mean, if you, I'm not a huge fan of the Jackass movies, but if, if you like them, you'll definitely like this one. Um, to yeah. me, they're okay, but there's too much in it, like... It, I was just like watching. I'm like, oh man, I don't want to see stuff like I, that. I like the hidden camera parts. Yeah, which that's all this movie was. Pretty much, it was the whole thing was hidden camera. And the the little kid, he stole the show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that kid. Wow, he was great. Um, did you ever see the Lone Ranger? 
No, I did not go see it. That would definitely be on my worst just based on you and Frankie's reactions. And yeah. everybody else I know that went and saw it. Why? I said I liked it. Well, mostly Frankie, <laughs> I guess. It I, just... I, 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 I liked it. It was what it was. They, I think they did too much of an origin story. Yeah, that might have been a problem. I don't know. I, everybody else I knew I talked to about it that went and saw it was like, dude, don't even waste your time. The, like that bad, huh? Okay, you know what? It, it's like a two and a half hour movie. <laughs> At least go see that last forty five minutes of it. The last forty five. I'll rent the DVD and watch the last forty five minutes. The the whole scene with the train <laughs> makes it worth it. Somebody somebody broke it down to me. Said the best reason you can find an excuse for this movie being made is so Johnny Depp could wear more makeup again yeah. and be another character. I'm like, he, okay, he doesn't need makeup to be a character. Uh, yeah, I like Johnny Depp. He's he can play anything as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but he's been making some questionable little, decisions as of late. Yeah, but let's see. I got one. Sharknado. I still have not seen that. It's on Netflix, also. I know. I just I haven't got around to watching it. Yet. I saw it at the theater. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was gonna go with you, but I had to work. And uh. I saw it, and it was... Actually, uh, I think I saw part of it on sci-fi before it started getting released on theaters. Like, yeah, it they, started off as a made-for-TV movie. It was made for sci-fi, and then uh, it got such a cult following on the internet, yeah. I guess, Just, that they did a one-night showing with the Phantoms events, whatever it's called, uh-huh. and you could go see it at the theater. One and, night only. And, well, now uh, it's on Netflix, so anybody can watch it. But It's... Horribly bad. <laughs> Tommy, why so bad? You know what? I think what made it good for Lisa, me you're was. Lisa, you tearing me apart. I think it was the whole uh, seeing it with a crowd that made <laughs> it fun. That's why I wanted to go, man. I just want to see everybody else's reactions around it. But I yeah. knew it was going to be a terrible movie. I just wanted to go see everybody else. Like we were working on that video. Uh, Road to Sharknado. We never did finish it though, and uh, where me and Frank went to Midland to go see it. And it, God, I wish I could have went. Well, it wasn't showing that night. It was showing the next night. Yeah, because apparently <laughs> in Midland, Texas, a midnight showing on Thursday night means Friday at midnight. You, yeah, you should say Friday. I don't know. You know, midnight showing wait, wait, me if means it's midnight it's tomorrow Friday. night. That means it's on Saturday. Exactly. So, midnight Thursday it, is Friday. I ended up seeing it in Austin because the <laughs> next day I went on vacation. I was down the Austin area. I saw it there, which that Austin crowd. <laughs> yeah, well, there are people Austin's that dressed up for it. Place. People had shark fin hats on. It was <laughs> awesome. See that? I wish I could have went to. That would have been awesome. One one that's surprisingly good i caught it on netflix i had seen the trailers but i never saw it at theaters it's one called the europa report it's uh it's about a uh group of astronauts going to the moon europa around uh jupiter and they're going to study the ice and what's underneath the ice on that moon and it's kind of a found footage one but taken from all security cameras in the <laughs> ship, and it's done really well. Uh, it's got the guy from Elysium, uh, Chateau Copley, I think it's Chateau name. Copley. Yeah, he's in it. Um, I, it was a surprisingly good movie. Uh, I was I watched it on during two lunch breaks, <laughs> 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 and uh, I, I I recommend checking it out if you get a chance. Um. What else can we think of? What else have you seen? <laughs> uh, new stuff? Not much. I've been on Netflix lately. I've been watching a lot of old '80s TV shows. Like I've been watching Airwolf the series. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some obscure, apparently foreign movies. I like get about five ten minutes into. It, I'm like, okay, this really sucks, and I'll just turn it off because it looks interesting based on the little previews they show you on the. Little Netflix, little picture stuff. It's like, okay, this might be interesting. And you're sitting there watch it for a little bit, and you're like, okay, fast forward a little bit, watch some more. It's like, yeah, okay, turn this off. This is stupid. 
And I, all right, I, I gotta make some amends here. I mean, as much crap as we gave it, Iron Man three is worth watching. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Iron Man three. It's a, it's a good movie. It's That's why I needed a list, man. <laughs> It was I a good got, movie. I got my list here. Just go with it, man. <laughs> You're scrolling too fast. <laughs> I know. Uh, but yeah, Iron Man 3 is worth watching. Um, Thor? Yeah, it's all right. Thor, yeah. It's building up to the next Avengers. They're yeah. And Guardians of the Galaxy. Which I'm looking Vin Diesel to is one. going to be a talking tree. And uh, what? what's his name? From Hangover is going to be a raccoon. Oh, uh, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper is going to yeah. be Rocket Raccoon. Yep. And recently announced, Paul Rudd will be Ant Man. They are going to do the Ant Man movie. Yep. But it still has nothing to do with Ultron. <laughs> and he's the guy that created Ultron for the next Avengers villain. They have named him Ultron as being Ultron. And Ant Man, hey. Hank Pine, created him. And Ultron's being played by James Spader. Oh. <sighs> Well, voice, it, he, he should be robotic. You're telling me Paul Rudd created James Spader? How does that work? <laughs> well, <laughs> in the comic book, Ant-Man creates Ultron. Almost done. Cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, yeah, there, there are a bunch of other th- things. Yeah. But. If I had to go with top ten, then my top ten would be Catching Fire, Hobbit, uh, Iron Man 3, Gravity, Oblivion, and, I don't know, was that 9? 6? I forget. I, mean, I wasn't counting. I wasn't either. <laughs> but all those uh, would definitely be in my top 10, you know, best of the year, because I'm a huge Marvel nut. and yeah. Of course, Thor was good, so it might be like, it'd be on the good list, just probably below the top 10. I'm waiting for Captain America Winter Soldier to come out. That looks... That that looks awesome. good actually, yeah. Look forward to that. Um, and eventually, Avengers two. Two thousand fifteen, when everything else comes out. Mm hmm. Including good. the new Star Wars. Star Wars, everything. The, the afterquels. <laughs> what do you call them? Not prequels or not the original story. They're the sequels. No, they already had sequels. That was, you know. Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The last of the saga? I don't know. <laughs> the after quills. I'm quoting. I'm 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 patenting that word right now. <laughs> I'm totally it's, it's making the, this up and I'm gonna trademark it. It's the reunion tour. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's it. That's our uh look back at two thousand thirteen. The year uh, in review. Yeah. The most uh, unorganized. We thought one about on it. Uh we were a little disorganized here. We've got but we got it all out. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoy the show uh, on the radio. Enjoy the video, whoever's watching that. And, uh, well. Uh, Simulcast. Make, yeah. <laughs> make sure you guys go to uh, BigSpringFilm.org. Check uh, check out the Big Spring Film Society. Uh, go like the Big Spring Film Society on Facebook. Um, also, go uh, like CheckBrain.com. That's our website. Me and Mikey do. Uh, we'll got, see him. We got Check Your Brain Productions on uh, Facebook. So go check that out. See what you th- think. Uh, we got all our new stuff posted up on all those. A couple new videos. Some stuff that we filmed months ago. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back uh, Holidays mess on the next show. Up. This should be airing Wednesday. And then the next Wednesday we should have a live show. Uh, we're going to be talking more about the best of 2013 with Brandon and whoever else is there. Uh, we're going to be playing music from the Golden Globe nominees and Academy Award nominees. And uh, we're going to have the phones are going to be open for everyone to make phone calls. Should be a fun show. We haven't done one in a while. And yeah, hopefully we're a little more organized than last time we were on the radio live. <laughs> uh, the kids aren't invited this time. Woo! So, anyway, uh, thanks for listening and watching, and y'all have a good night.